Do you mercy me. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Well, federal law prohibits the military from using propaganda and psychological tactics on U.S. citizens. But that is exactly what may have happened in Afghanistan, according to reporter Michael Hastings. His most recent expose for Rolling Stone magazine is called Another Runaway General, Army Deploy Psych PSYOPs on U.S. Senators. In the article, Hastings writes that Lieutenant General William Caldwell, the commander of NATO training mission in Afghanistan, illegally employed psychological operations to manipulate visiting American senators into providing more troops and funding for the war effort. According to the article, a military cell devoted to what is known as information operations was repeatedly pressured to target visiting senators and other VIPs who met with Caldwell. Caldwell uh, Hastings says the campaign uh, targeted a variety of policymakers, including Senators John McCain, Joe Lieberman, Jack Reed, Al Franken, and Carl Levin. Although the military has denied Hastings' allegations, the U.S. command in Afghanistan issued a statement saying General David Petraeus is preparing to order an investigation to determine the the facts and circumstances surrounding the issue. Last month, Hastings won the George Polk Award for his article in Rolling Stone last year that led to the dismissal of former NATO commander, U.S. Army General Stanley McChrystal. Michael Hastings is joining us now from Washington, D.C. Uh, Michael, thank you so much for taking the time from writing your book to do this. Just lay out what you found. No problem. Thanks for having me. Uh, well, essentially, what we have here is that an information operations cell, which is a cell that, by definition, is trained to conduct psychological operations and military deception, was uh, asked by Lieutenant General Caldwell and his staff to use their skills on visiting uh, U.S. senators uh, and other VIPs. Now, the, the, the cell, this, this I.O. cell, uh, was led by a gentleman named Lieutenant Colonel Michael Holmes. Lieutenant Colonel Holmes uh, raised objections to being asked to do this. He said, hey, uh, I'm an I.O. cell. Uh, information operations is only supposed to be used for foreign audiences. It's a really bad idea to, to be using uh, my team, because we specialize in psychological operations and, and whatnot, uh, to be doing this. Um, but the pressure kept on, 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 uh, on mounting on him to, to you know, focus his, all his efforts, not on the Afghans, but on, but on Americans visiting. Finally, he received a written order to this effect, you know, focus all your efforts on, on essentially manipulating uh, visiting senators. Uh, he then took that order and went to a lawyer, a JAG lawyer. The lawyer said, yes, uh, this is not right, uh, this is illegal. Uh, another lawyer confirmed that opinion, and then Caldwell's people refined the order to, to say, oh, well, you're only, you're only looking at public records, but then they launched a retaliatory investigation into the whistleblower, Colonel Michael Holmes. And, uh, and after he sort of, um, over a period of months, tried to get his complaints redressed and said, hey, I was attacked because I'm a whistleblower, I was investigated because I'm a whistleblower, uh, that also had no impact, and so eventually he decided to go public with his story. Explain what PSYOPs are. Sure. Uh, psychological operations and information operations are essentially just ways to influence um, the population. Now, the, 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 the key is, is that for I.O. and PSYOPs, you're only supposed to do those on, on foreign populations, on the enemy. You know, and now, there's another branch, public affairs, which, is, uh, which, which you're allowed to then uh, use your information on, on the American population. The, the key difference is, is that in information operations and in PSYOPs, you're allowed to lie. You're allowed to, to, to mislead, where in public affairs, in theory at least, uh, you're not supposed to do that. And by using information operations with, who know how to conduct psychological operations, in the process that would traditionally be held for public affairs, you're corrupting the entire process. And, and you know, one of the interesting, interesting things has, has been to see the reaction from the military. Of course, I, I commend General Petraeus for launching an investigation, but what we also know from a series of anonymous leaks is that, is that the military doesn't think they've done anything wrong here. And that, to me, is, is truly disturbing in what, what the actual bigger story is. This very aggressive effort that Caldwell has been at the forefront from to tear down the wall between information and propaganda, um, between public affairs and information operations, to say it's one, it's one giant playing field now, and to allow the Pentagon and the military to be able to target not just foreign populations with their propaganda, but target uh, the U.S. populations, whether it's on
on Facebook, on social networking sites, um, or, or visiting uh, congressmen. Uh, well, Michael, uh, your article also indicates that the uh, the team was di directed to also target uh, Admiral Mike Mullen of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Right. So, in essence, uh, sure. General Caldwell was uh, trying to do propaganda against one of his bosses. Sure, uh, sure. I mean, I think the way to look at it is that, you know, uh, they're asked to—why are they being asked to focus on visiting American dignitaries over what their mission is supposed to be, which is uh, focus on, on the Afghan population and the Taliban? And, and I think it just shows how far, A, how, how far off the rails that entire operation has gone, but also the acknowledgment that the most important— issue in this war, the most important battlefield in this war, actually isn't in Afghanistan, it's in Washington. And by spinning, manipulating, and using whatever resources you have to convince uh, the policymakers in Washington, be it Adder Mullen or Al Franken, that's where you want to devote your resources to. And that, to me, again, is very troubling. Michael Hastings, can you talk about how this fits into um, the overall issue of the military pushing for 20,000 troops to remain in um, Iraq beyond the December 2011 sure. withdrawal deadline, uh, the modest expectations for the July troop drawdown in Afghanistan, how this fits into the catastrophe that is unfolding every day in Afghanistan. I mean, uh, Karzai and Petraeus starkly different accounts of incidents of um, Afghan civilian casualties, the response to Tuesday's attack in which NATO helicopter gunships killed nine young boys. Sure. I, I mean, I mean, clearly, clearly, Afghanistan has gone gone off the rails and went off the rails a while ago, and and there's and there's so little they can actually do to influence the battlefield. I mean, they are doing some things. They're upping their special forces operations. They're upping airstrikes. They're doing all these kinds of things. But the key is is to shape the perceptions of of Americans uh, back home. Um, I mean, and, and the point you made about Iraq, right? I mean, I, I had a, I, I interviewed a general uh, almost a year ago, actually to this day in in, in Baghdad, uh, General Ordierno, and I asked him this question. I said, uh, "How many troops are going to be left in Iraq after uh, December 2011?" And he said, uh, "He said he said zero. And I said, "No, you're kidding me. There's going to be some more." And I said, "Well, at the the most significant would be, you know, 2,000 or 3,000. Here we are a year later. Uh, they're already trying to get 20,000 more more troops to stay there. So I, I think um, how it all fits in is how this war is being sold. I mean, we have to remember that the Pentagon, God bless them, has about a billion dollars a year to spend on all their sorts of information operations, and they have a lot of allies in the media who are willing to to sort of help them sell that story for, for a variety of reasons. So I, I think whether it's the civilian casualties, whether it's this sort of argue, you know, the butting heads of, of Petraeus and Karzai uh, to, to what's going on in Iraq, there is a huge effort to con keep these wars going for as long as they can. And I know that sounds sort of Radical, uh, Michael, but, uh, Michael, but we just the, have a little the more, evidence speaks for itself. We just have a little more time. Your piece is drawing intense criticism. Andrew Exum of the Center for New American Security wrote, essentially, Michael Hastings is doing bad think tank policy analysis with a little character assassination thrown in for extra measure. Your response? Well, well, well if I'm doing... If I'm doing bad think tank analysis, they should hire me at the Center for New American Security. <laughs> but, um, uh, you, you, know, you know, look, I, I mean, I, I don't... I don't See, I, I'm not interested in getting into sort of these media on media fights. Um, the same thing happened with with my story on General McChrystal. The same thing happened with the story I did a couple weeks ago on on uh, on Afghanistan as well. Um, I, I would just say that Five you know, seconds. Th there's p people people with vested interest in continuing these wars are going to be critical. Of, of, the, of the type of work we're doing at Rolling Stone. Well, Michael Hastings, thanks so much for being with us. A Rolling Stone piece, another runaway general army deploys PSYOPs and U.S. senators. Congratulations for your journey.